Look around you. You're likely to see something in motion. This is what my household was obsessed with last weekend. What a perfect physics lesson. Motion, motion, everywhere. But how can you tell that these cars are actually in motion? How would you define it? That's what we're going to talk about today. Reference points are used all the time to see if things are moving. Right now we have a large hill in the, in the background. If we want to know if any cars are moving, we can compare it to that large hill in the background. In this scenario, we know the boy is moving because we compare him to the trees in the background. The trees are our reference point. Some things move so quickly that we don't even realize they're moving. Light, for example, travels at a speed of about 300,000 kilometers per second. That's fast enough to go around the Earth seven times in just one second. The Earth itself also travels very quickly. At the equator, the rotational speed of the Earth is about 1,700 kilometers per hour. That's pretty fast, but it's a snail's pace compared to the speed at which the Earth orbits the Sun at about 107,000 kilometers per hour. So if it's going this fast, how come we don't notice? Because the gravitational pull is so too strong for us to be like falling all over the place. That's pretty darn fast. Because we're still? That's fast. Because we're still? Because of gravity. Because of gravity? Don't ask me. <laughs> if the Earth is traveling 1,056 miles per hour, how come we can't feel that? Because of gravity. gravity. And we're sitting and down. Of, we're sitting down, and the this air and is traveling so fast and the that log, we don't even know it. No, and the Next question. <laughs> if the Earth's traveling 1,056 miles per hour, how come we can't feel it? <laughs> It's because it's so big that no, when it travels around the sun. We're so tiny in a speck of big. I have the answer. <laughs> yeah, because it's so big. So when it travels around the sun, it's like this? harder to feel. It's kind of like when you're like in the car and then like when you see the sun and you're driving by. Because we're traveling the same speed as the earth because we're on the earth. But I'm not moving right now. Yes, you are. You just don't know it. Oh, you're just... We don't notice the speed of the Earth's rotation or our orbit around the Sun because everything around us is traveling at exactly the same speed. It's similar to when you're flying at very high speeds on a plane because everything around you is traveling at the same speed. You don't notice how fast you are going. Relative motion is going to depend on your point of view. An object is going to be in motion if its distance from a reference point is changing. If you stand perfectly still, are you in motion? From your point of view, no, but if viewed from space, you would be traveling about a thousand miles per hour with the rotation of the Earth. You calculate speed every day and you don't even know it. Right now I know that I'm traveling 40 miles an hour because my speedometer on my car tells me that. To calculate speed, you only need to know two things. The distance that you're traveling and how long it takes you to get there. Let's investigate this idea of speed a little bit more. Speed is a rate, meaning it's comparing two things. It's the distance traveled by an object divided by that time it takes to travel that distance. So here's the formula for speed. Speed equals distance over time. So the units that we use for speed are typically meters per second, uh, represented m slash s. Other units that you might see is kilometers per hour. That would be something for you know bigger units, faster units like a car traveling or an airplane or a space shuttle. Um, you would use kilometers per hour, km um, slash hr. Feet per second would be like how far you might walk. Uh, how many? feet per second can I walk to my locker um, but again feet is going to be used um, in the American system that's not metric so um, kilometers is what you're going to hear around the world except for the US as 
what it out what also is not metric is miles per hour and miles per hour we use in the u.s all the time um, we typically use it for again things like cars or, or planes or trains um, not really for smaller things like me walking to my mailbox we wouldn't measure it in miles per hour so feet and miles are not metric but kilometers are um, and meters are and we will in class typically use meters per second uh, average speed is going to be your total distance that you um, walked or you you know traveled over your total time so if you're looking at multiple trips and you want to find the average speed of all those trips you would take the total distance of all those trips divided by the total time so here's an example if I had 32 kilometers in my one um, case in 13 kilometers in my next case uh, that'd be a total of 45 kilometers if the first case only lasted two hours and the second one was one hour you'd have a total of three hours that you were looking at my average speed would be total distance over total time so I would have an average speed of 15 kilometers per hour so let's go ahead and look at a graph um, what average speed would look like so in this graph right here my blue line represents my actual speed so as the time goes by you see that I um, at the beginning part of my journey I wasn't going as fast um, I wasn't covering that much distance as the time went by but in the second part of my journey you see that the slope is a little bit steeper that shows you that I covered a lot more distance in a shorter amount of time uh, I kind of taper off in the third unit of uh, time right here and in the fourth unit of time I again I slow down a little bit so that's my actual um, path now or my travel time and the distance that I went uh, the red line is going to show you an average speed so it's taking all those distances adding them up and dividing by the total um, time that it take for for all those different sections of my journey okay let's investigate instantaneous speed instantaneous speed would be uh, speed that you would record at that specific second so whatever time you are um, measuring it at that would be your time that you use in the formula and whatever distance that you're at um, we can measure the instantaneous speed right at that moment so for instance if you're having a race between um, the tortoise and the hare right uh, they're running to the finish line if you were to pause it right at a split second you could get their instantaneous speed um, that they're traveling calculating instantaneous speed would work something like this I have a distance time graph with a bunch of different dots representing the speed taken at different points during the uh, experiment or test. If I hone in on this third point right here and I check out where its distance lies on the y-axis, I notice that I'm getting about uh, 28 meters. And then if I look at where I line up in the x-axis, it's about 35 seconds speed equals distance over time so if I take 28 divided by 35 I get 0.8 meters per second and that would be the instantaneous speed at the third point I hope you enjoyed our lesson on speed see you in class